how important is it for the Vols in recruiting to have first round draft picks? Scale of one to 10, it's a 10. Okay. And let me tell you why. First, Craven Wings, three locations, a fantastic Saturday brunch. You'll love Craven Wings. And Jake Warren approves, and he is absolutely fantastic. So if he endorses it, and endorses it, what do you got to lose? And Caleb's on board as well. All right. So, a scale of one to 10, how important is it for the balls to have first round draft picks, i.e., success in the NFL draft? Would you like to go first, sir? Yeah, I'll go. And in um, recruiting is specifically what we're talking about. Go ahead. All right. What did you say? I missed that last thing. Uh, how important is it? Is it oh, in recruiting? In for, recruiting. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you go recent history, and I mean, and this is post Fulmer era, you would say one because every time Tennessee has a first round pick, a disastrous season follows. But if you look at history, there is no question it's a 10. There's no question it's a 10. I mean, high caliber first round draft picks are what kept Tennessee's recruiting at a very high level in the 90s. I think it was 1991, the 91 draft that had three first rounders, Charles McRae, Anton Davis, and Alvin Harper, all taken in the first round. Let's not pretend that didn't set the stage for Tennessee's run in the 90s where they were able to recruit at a high level consistently because of that draft. Yeah, I I, th- I think it's huge, and I covered recruiting for a decade. I think it's monstrous. I think the the thing that kids always ask first. It was not sorry to hurt your feelings if if, you, if you're kind of naive to recruiting. It's not academics. It's not activities I can do on campus. It's can they get me to the NFL? That's the first thing that typically they're asked. I would Wait, say they're not at Tennessee for the degree. <laughs> right. And and they didn't grow up when they're two years old wearing orange in a lot of cases. So, and here's what Josh Heupel has. Josh Heupel has, and it's hard to quantify this, but he has the feel good, right? Everybody thinks that this is a good culture. And until I hear differently, I think it's a fantastic culture that they have rolling right now. So you have that going for you. You have the offense for offensive players and they certainly love that no question about it Uh, they like scoring defensively probably not so much but you add in when you can say look at Hendon Hooker Darnell Wright whoever they were drafted high and you didn't even know who they were a year and a half ago or a year ago maybe even since Hendon Hooker was entering his first year as a starter it is monstrous and I'm going to give you an example why his name is Gabe Judy Lolly Jr. the third Esquire. Gabe Judy Lolly showed up to Tennessee, and I wrote a story on this on offthehooksports.com, and I would encourage you to check it out. He said that he transferred to Tennessee not because of playing time, but because two reasons. He loved the culture at Tennessee, number one. Number two, he when when he thought that they could get him ready for the NFL. Now, it's a little preemptive for Gabe Judy Lawley. We've seen some guys go on to the NFL, such as Bayless Jones and some other guys under Hypo that have had success. But this would really cement that, Caleb. I think Gabe Judy Lawley said it all. He doesn't even care if he starts, is what he said in our article. He doesn't care. He thinks that being a part of this culture – and moving on to the NFL one day is a very realistic thing. That's that's big time stuff. That's next level recruiting. That's not getting ahead of Georgia and Alabama and offering early. That's that's a whole nother level. Please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, we highly encourage you to do that. But we love that like button. Caleb gave Judy Lawley, uh, I think, told us all we need to know when you ask the question about how important is it for Tennessee to have high draft picks. It's incredibly important. And let's think about when Gabe Judy Lally said this. Tennessee's most recent NFL draft, their highest pick was a cornerback. The second round, Alante Taylor, who was probably going to be a full-time... I mean, he was a full-time starter for the Saints by the end of the year. He's going to remain a full-time starter for the Saints next year. They had two defensive backs taken in the 2021... in the 2022 NFL draft, despite all the past defense woes we talked about that they were struggling through. They had two defensive backs taken. 
We've talked about how Trayvon Flowers is a under the radar defensive back in this draft. And so I, and we also know that Tim Banks specializes in developing defensive backs. So yeah, you're right. I mean, what happens is you're, the NFL having a first rounder, Alante was a second rounder. And I think that a hu- had a huge impact on Gabe Judy Lally. You get a couple of first rounders. I mean, if Darnell Wright goes in the top 20, I mean, let's just take Darnell Wright Dave, for a second. He goes in the top 20. What are the chances that just massively boosts Tennessee's uh, chances of recruiting high profile offensive linemen for 2024? It's huge. And, and you pick Darnell Wright and, and Hendon Hooker. Those are the two positions that I think are most important for Tennessee to have success in, in the next level, because you look at Tennessee's offensive line and you could, if you didn't watch them say, Oh, that's just a pass happy offense. They're just absolutely uh, blocking for a quarterback who throws the ball around quick. There's no, Nothing there. Same thing for a quarterback. It's easy. It's the offense. When you have success on the offensive line and at quarterback, now quarterback's not going to pay off for a couple of years with Nico in play, but you have, you've made a statement, Caleb, in particular with Darnell and Hendon Hooker. I, I agree. And we know this from the history of Tennessee as wide receiver U. They could go anywhere in the country and get any receiver they wanted by the time the late 90s came because they were just churning out receivers in the NFL like nobody's business. Another point people I want to bring up is that on the highest of high scales, the greatest recruiting heist we all agree in history, I don't think it's a coincidence Peyton Manning committed to Tennessee the same year Heath Shuler was set to be a top five draft pick in the NFL. Whatever Heath Shuler's NFL career became, by the way, and we know it didn't amount to what his draft pick was, but you don't think the fact that David Cutcliffe was had just finished coaching a projected first round NFL draft pick had an impact on Peyton Manning choosing Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb, and this is going to sound crazy. I think Keith Schuler getting him as a commitment was almost as big as Peyton Manning because it led to Peyton Manning. I, I believe, agree with that. I believe that completely, and. You know, if I'm Peyton Manning, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, you know, there are things that he does better than Heath. Progressions, reads, the freeze plays where you call two plays at the line of scrimmage. And he's probably saying, man, I visited with this David Cutcliffe over dinner. My mom cooked chicken. And he's really, really smart. He's like at another level. No, I think if if not for Heath Shuler, they don't get Peyton Manning. So I'll go ahead and say it. I think that Peyton Manning or that Heath Shuler was a bigger pickup in recruiting than Peyton Manning. Sounds insane. Yeah. Doesn't it? I, that's insane to think about because let's not just think about Heath Shuler. They got a lot of receivers because of Heath Shuler after that. A lot of players wanted to play in that. I know they were already wide receiver U, but it was taken to another level in the 90s. And so I think that um, I think that Heath Shuler – was a huge role. I think T- Peyton had to meet with Cutcliffe because he had to know that Cutcliffe wasn't going to force Peyton to play the same style that Heath Schuler played because Peyton couldn't run like Heath Schuler, obviously. But once he realized that, yeah, I'm with you. I think that was a huge deal. So, yeah, these first round draft picks are huge. And if Tennessee gets a, if Hendon Hooker sneaks into the first round, I mean, already Josh Heupel's the quarterback whisperer. You're going to start seeing even more Nico Iamaliavis commit to Tennessee in the future.